that's pretty cool. I bet you want to make something like that. If you now look up Roblox movie on YouTube, you will find things like this. This is not a Roblox movie. It's instead more like one of those storytime TikToks. Just put Subway Surfers gameplay underneath it. However, this is what a real Roblox movie looks like. So how do I do it? Well, you can learn everything you need to know from this tutorial. This video will teach you everything from character design to editing the actual thing. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. To be good at something, you must first point and laugh at someone who's bad at it. I came up with that just now, actually. Now you may be asking, um, Mr. V Films, why is this bad? Ah, I'm glad you asked, and teach you I will. You see, all these films are filmed inside of a Roblox game, and not just any game, but this game. The worst mistake you can ever make. You see, recording in a LEGO game comes with a ton of limitations. First, you're limited by the assets the game offers. Second, you're limited to an FIV of 70, we'll explain why that's important later. And third, you're limited by the in-game animations. Just look at this goofy all walk, bro. Uh, well, wait, hold up, what's that over there? Oh, that's my Discord server. Join my Discord server today, where you can listen to me ramble about unrelated nonsense, and also get updates on the videos and projects I'm working on. Also, check out my website where I sell my car models, so you can give me money. Okay, add over. Back to the actual tutorial. Now, what you're going to do now is turn off Roblox and log on to Roblox Studio. Cause that's where the real grind begins. First, let's talk about character design. Something I see a lot of these films do is create extremely generic characters that look like they came straight up from 2018. Due to the design nature of Roblox, you cannot just use a different face on a character and call it a different person. Because in that case, everybody will be looking the same. Instead, the most important tool in your arsenal are hair and clothing. First, let's talk about hair. Most of the hair on the catalog is complete garbage and it will take you a bit of digging to find something that you can actually use. Like bro, why does every piece of hair cover the eyes? Bro looks like I'm 14 and this is deep kid. You just don't understand me. However, when deciding on the hairstyle of your characters, make sure that the characters have differing hairstyles as this is the main way to tell your characters apart. If they look too similar, try using different hair colors. You can also try mixing different hairs to get the desired look as you can see in this example. At the top of the hair is messy, but it's calm at the bottom. This works best with female characters. Now onto clothing. Do not choose the first thing that you see on the catalog, because most of it is likely just ugly and cringe. Preferably, try joining some Roblox clothing groups. For example, try finding actually good suits on the Roblox catalog. You can, because there aren't any. I personally get my suits from this group, they have a pretty good selection. You can also use clothing as a tool for character expression. What do I mean by that? For example, you can have one guy that always wears hoodies, and then another guy that just walks around shirtless. By using specific types of clothing, you can show what kind of character your character is. Next topic, faces. I will not be explaining how to animate faces in this video because I already made a video about that. So watch that after this one. Instead, what I will be talking about is how you can use face packs to express emotions through these LEGO people. We will not be using the faces on the catalog since they limit you greatly in the expression of your character. Instead what you're going to be doing is going to the toolbox and looking up face pack and spawning every single face pack that you can see. For female characters I tend to use this face pack and for male characters I tend to use the modular face pack by the Roblox cinematic community. Next topic, assembling a character. First, how do you add clothing to a character? This is actually extremely easy. Step 1 is to find the piece of clothing that you want to put on your character. After finding the piece of clothing that you like, go over to the URL and copy these numbers. These numbers are called the clothing ID. After that, go to Roblox Studio and open up the character and select the shirt or pants depending on what you want to insert. Then go down to properties and paste the clothing ID where it says clothing template. 
If you do not see the Explorer or the Properties window, go to the View tab and they will be right here. If your rig does not have a shirt or pants template, you can add them by pressing this plus sign and either way looking up shirt or pants. Adding accessories will require you to have a plugin. Go over to the toolbox and look up Accessory Inserter and get any that you like. Most of them are free and accomplish the same goal. Next, go over to the Roblox catalog and find any accessory that you'd like. For this example, I will be looking up hair. Once you find the accessory you would like, you will copy the goofy boofy number in the URL or the accessory ID. Next, boot up the accessory inserter of your choice and paste in the ID into the insert. Then the accessory will summon itself either way in the workspace or in a designated folder depending on the accessory inserter you use. After that, you can just simply drag and drop the accessory into the rig. And now you know how to assemble a character. If you want to know how to add faces and how to animate them, watch this tutorial. After this one, of course. Do not ruin my watch time. Scenes are extremely important for your film. A good setting will complement your story and will give the viewer something to look at. Now, you can open up the toolbox and start inserting every free model under the sun, however, it is extremely hard to find something that actually looks good since 90% of all the assets on the catalog are complete garbage. If you have no idea how to model, the toolbox is your best option. However, I do recommend assembling an arsenal of your personal assets that you can use for your own projects. Things like basic buildings, furniture, and stuff of that nature. Now, from my experience, there are two ways to build a film map or a film set. The first way is to have one big city map where you won't use 90% of it. Or the second way is to have many small film sets that you can switch between depending on what you're filming. It's up to you on what you want to do, but if you want to produce it faster, the smaller film sets are a better choice. For example, the fourth episode of my show Day Racer, I had used many smaller film sets. Toshi's house was a separate film set, this grocery store was a separate film set, and this racetrack was also a different film set. However, my last project was filmed on a full map, so take it as you will. Another note is when assembling your map, try to make sure that you can't see the other end of the map from one end of the map. This will greatly improve your film set as it will make it look more realistic since in real life the world is not flat. You can accomplish this by making more variation in the terrain or placing buildings to cover the void. Now this is the part where you will most likely click off the video. Back when I was writing the script for this tutorial, Moon Animator only cost 1700 bobux. Which I mean is still a lot of money, but it's reasonable. But recently, Roblox decided to do a little bit of trolling, and make every single plugin cost real money. I mean, I can't even defend this. Now, if you got Moon Animator when it was free, you can simply update it for free and you will be able to use it. If you don't have Moon Animator, you have two options. Option 1 is to use Blender. However, if you choose this option, you will have to find someone else to walk your hand through it since I'm afraid to touch Blender. And option 2? Piracy. Now, I don't encourage piracy and it's clearly wrong, but I sail the seven seas. Do your own research and make your own decisions. Now, I won't be explaining how to animate in this video since I already made many videos about that. Now, let's continue with the tutorial. Camera may just be the most important tool in your arsenal. Here are the basics. If you're using Moon Animator, you can simply add the camera by going to the Camera tab and pressing Add. Once you add the camera, you will see that it has options for FOV and C-Frame. If you click these three dots, you will see there are more options, but in this video we will only be talking about these two. First, if you look at any movie, you may have noticed that their FOV is lower than in something like a video game. I don't really know why it's done, but it makes it look cooler. You can create a custom FOV by double-clicking on the field of view, and that will create a keyframe. 
Now if you double click on the screen frame, it will open up this window. Here you are able to modify the field of view. Set it to something between 30 and 50. You can change the FOV depending on what scene you are making. For example, if you are recording a scene at an office table, you can keep your FOV at 30. However, if you're filming something inside of a car, you may want to go for a higher FOV since everything is so much closer together. Now on to camera movement. Most of the time, you may want to keep your camera stationary. For example, it would be really distracting if the camera kept moving when two characters are having a conversation. However, you may want to add camera movement for something like an establishing shot or for example when a car is moving. Adding camera movement is extremely easy. Double click on the C-frame timeline and add a keyframe. Then move this line to the position where you want the camera to stop and then move your camera to a new position. After that, double click on C-frame to add a keyframe. The distance between these two keyframes will affect the speed at which the camera will move. The closer together they are, the faster the camera will move and vice versa. One more thing I want to talk about in terms of camera is how the camera should be positioned when two characters are having a conversation. When two characters are having a conversation, try keeping the camera to one side like in this example. This will make it easier for your viewer to follow. Next, recording your animation. Once you animate a scene, you will need to record it. Now first, you may probably want to get a recording software. I personally use OBS Studios, it's really easy to use and it's also free. Under this video there will be a link to download OBS Studio. The download process is extremely simple so I won't be walking you through that. After downloading OBS, you will want to create a scene in here. After creating a scene in the source tab, you will want to add game capture. Then set it to capture a specific window. Then select your Roblox window and for the sake of convenience, set this to match title or otherwise find window of same type. This is just so that you don't have to go back in here every time you're recording in a different Roblox world. One last thing, over here in settings, make sure you change your output for the video to something like mp4 since that's what most video editors take in. Then I usually just start recording, switch to my Roblox window, hide Moon Animator by pressing Ctrl H, and then press the spacebar to play the animation. After the animation is done playing, I will stop the recording. Editing A painful process everyone has to deal with whether they like it or not. Now to edit a video, you will first need to obtain a video editor. Now there are free video editors out there like CapCut. You poor peasant. Now if you feel superior over the poor people, you can get something like Adobe Premiere Pro. I personally use this video editor for all the videos I make. Now if you want to obtain Adobe, you will have to pay somewhere between $23 and $34 a month. Now if you're a student, you get a huge discount. You can get all of the Adobe apps for just $20 a month. Talk about a good deal. Now I believe this plan expires once you graduate from the particular school you're in, but I don't really know. Just do your own research. In this video I will be using Adobe Premiere Pro 2023 and let's get into it. For this next part I had prepared 3 clips that we're going to edit for this short. For this example, we will add dialogue. Now there are two main ways to show dialogue in your project. The first way is to voice all of the lines, either way in by yourself or with a team of people and then edit them together. However, for this example we will be doing the easy solution, which is just uh, putting text on screen. If you really want voiced lines but don't have any friends, you could just use AI. If you're fine with this sounding like a chatbot, then this may be the best solution for you. In either case, let's begin. Now a lot of the things I will be doing in this video editor, you should be able to perform in your own video editor. The first thing I will do is insert all of the video clips I recorded from my recording session into the video editor. Next, I'm going to line them up on my timeline in the correct order. After that, I will cut the access footage from every clip. That primarily includes the time before the animation where you can see the moon animator and the time after the animation when it ends. Then I will insert text, type out the dialogue and then resize it. 
Now you may be saying, um, Mr. V Films, that does not seem that hard actually. If that was all you had to do to edit a video, it would indeed be really easy. If it wasn't for... I really hate editing audio, as you can tell by my horrible audio mixing in this video. Now there are websites where you can obtain sound effects, but a lot of them want you to give them your hard earned money. What I do is just go to YouTube and look up a specific sound effect that I need. Then I simply record the screen and then just edit out the screen recording and keep the audio only. You may need to make your audio louder in the video editor since most likely the audio you recorded was really quiet. I also recommend assembling a folder of audio clips so that you don't have to go back to YouTube every time you need a specific sound clip. For music, you can really use any song that you want. However, keep in mind any streamlined or popular song will most likely be copyrighted. This means that if you want to get monetized in the future, this is a bad idea because the person who made the song will steal all of your money. So start finding and collecting an arsenal of non-copyrighted music. Try searching for terms like non-copyrighted. But in general, whenever you hear a good song, look up if it's copyrighted. And finally, I am done with this video. This was the most over-edited video that I have ever made on this channel, and if you appreciate that, you can go ahead, like this video, and subscribe. This is not a suggestion by the way. Also, go check out my Discord server and check out my website. This is the best way to support me. And yeah, thank you for watching.